Let's get to the, the London Cup final. Mm -hmm. So the cup final that we all wanted, let's, let's, let's face facts. The cup final that we all wanted, Beatty's versus Essie Dons, the two powerhouses of YouTube football. Um, how was it from your point of view? Because from a fan point of view, fantastic. Great to see, what, near enough two and a half thousand fans rocking up to a League One stadium. But from your point of view, how did it go? Man, it really does depend what day you catch me. Because um, you was mega I'm busy good. on the day yeah, yeah. for a start. Yeah. But also, like, you know, did it cover costs? Did it exceed expectations? Like, talks from that point of view. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll be as careful with my words and open at the same time. Okay. So, because a lot of people that need to be, a lot of um, entities that need to be respected, but at the same time, people want to hear. You can't come on a show like this and just be quiet. Like, okay. Uh, I think, just to adjust a few things you said, to be PC, probably say two of the biggest grassroots teams in the world mm -hmm. two of the biggest in the country obviously by default and two of the biggest in london uh, definitely one of the ideal cup final matchups because with the london sunday challenge cup respectfully to essie Downs and bay Tees, there are about what 12 maybe 15 different cup final matchups that could be that we all would want to see in terms of fan favorites this is probably it's probably number one so um it was the biggest sort of, I won't say wake up call, the biggest learning curve that I probably ever had in my career as, as an adult. Understanding how big grassroots football is, but it's not about understanding how big it is, it's about understanding its actual size. Because I made a lot of errors, especially with overestimating the size. Right. Now, obviously, um, in terms of the attendance, you thought it was going to be a big In terms attendance. of the whole, the whole profile of, of, of everything. Now, obviously, people can go back to, uh, it, it was great. Everyone who is above me at London FA or the National FA was incredibly happy. They were happy with the safety. They were happy with the organization, logistics, operations. But what are all those things? Boring! <laughs> you know, if you want to work in football one day, you want to um, work in security one day, yeah, you want to be a referee or manage your own club, then all those sorts of things are need-to-know stuff. But if you're a football fan, I don't care about the operations, man. Talk about the game. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, for me, it was a, it was a learning curve to, to understand what the size is. Yes, 3,000 people at a final is amazing. It's record-breaking, especially considering that Bay Tees had their semi-final the week before. Yeah. So, yes, if there was more time to promote, if the game wasn't played on the same day as the North London Derby, you know, could the attendance been, been up 10%, 20%, double, Even triple? Even the same day as the Nationals as well. You know, it's the same thing as the National Cup final, even though I don't think that took away too much, but it still would have taken two or 300 and, you know. So, yeah, made a lot of mistakes with that. I, I don't know what headline you'll use for this, but, you know, I'll, I'll speak carefully enough to where I won't care whichever one you use. Yeah. But I would be surprised if I ever book another professional ground again. Yeah. You, you can never say never, because you're always open to it, but the... The costs were pretty extreme. And I can imagine. Yeah, luckily for me, uh, I've had a good six season run, but I cost the association thousands of pounds. And then obviously uh, the association weren't too, uh, they were accepting of that because their first priority was safety. So they're like, okay, well, well that money loss is completely fine because there was no report of crime, no report of injury. And obviously when you're running an event like that, you're worried about slipping fools. You're worried about sudden cardiac arrest. So with none of those things happening, apart some, from the injury on the pitch, so, oh, yes, of yeah. course, obviously, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to say that, but on the, yeah, yeah, I know when you're running an event on the pitch, injuries are it's, it's uh, part and parcel, part and parcel. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, especially the way um, that person got injured, like it wasn't even like a bad tackle or a punch or anything. It was just literally natural. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, all the London FA brass were happy. A lot of them were there in the organization, the, the, the celebrities, the important people. Um, and then, but you know, from my end, you know, a lot of people look up to me, some maybe even admire me and the people who don't like me still understand my position. I can't go to those people who I write references for, who I provide work experience for, who I provide volunteering experience for, who I've gotten jobs and make them say, hey, it's okay to cost your business thousands of pounds. Absolutely no. Yeah, cool. You know, so um, it, it hit me hard. I was so disappointed. Would, was it, so. would it be fair to say that you kind of overestimated how many people that you thought was going to attend because yeah. did you I, see like the amount was it like a case of okay Beatty's got X amount of subscribers Essie Don's got X amount of subscribers the, the ground holds what 10k we can yeah, easily fill under. that yeah yeah I mean well the problem is when you're dealing with operations you have to prepare for the um, 
any possible scenario. And if the if a venue holds 9,200, unfortunately, I couldn't guarantee that 9,200 people wouldn't turn up. Mm. I couldn't guarantee it. I, I, I told them it's unlikely. I put it into single digits of percentage like likelihood. But once you do that, I didn't have to pay for security for 9,200. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't have to pay for food for 9,200, all those sorts of things. And that's where the, the problem lies. Now, for anyone who's booking venues, because there's going to be people watching this who will run competitions in the future or run cup finals or tournaments, there's no such thing as a, per a perfect venue. Mm. A lot of people love the venue. Some of the teams are arriving and they're like, well, where's the parking? You know, then you go to a different venue. There's plenty of parking, but then there's not enough seated stands. Yeah. You know, there's no covered areas. Or you go to a different ground, you have to pay for park. There's no such thing as a perfect venue. With this, you know, it, it kind of highlighted how good I am at running events to a certain standard when going to that professional standard. Still quite good, but not at that level yet because I've, I've definitely miscalculated a few things. Um, yeah, looking at subscribers, looking at followers, looking at attendance in previous matches. Then you have to look at other things. Uh, Kickoff time. Uh, what other games are on? National Cup final, North London derby. And it's not just any North London derby. If, if Arsenal and Tottenham were 7th and 8th, it wouldn't have been that important. But because I had title and Champions League connotations to it, you know, um, and people, people wanted to watch that. Um, so there's a lot of factors. And even the... Uh, I have an algorithm that I calculate for all finals, but this is like all finals. So that algorithm didn't compute out. Then when you're looking at um, other YouTube matches, charity matches, you look at the sidemen. Because that was definitely another barometer that people were looking at. Yeah. And like, oh, well, that, that, that sold out 27,000 so much. I had to go to a 60,000 seat stadium, an a, a international Olympic stadium. And it, that sold out. And you're like, oh, yeah, but, you know, these teams don't have the profile assignment. You're like, okay, but how much smaller are they? Yeah. If they got 6,000, are they 10%? They're at least 10% of the profile of the assignment. So surely at least 6,000 people will turn. And you're going that and that and that and this and this and this. So that's why the security, the operations, logistics was so great. Um, probably... Uh, that's why the event was so well organized because we had more than what we needed. Yeah. So maybe, but yeah. maybe for next time, a little bit lower. Maybe national league rounds, Dulwich Hamlets. That sort of that sort of size attendance would be suitable because. Well, it was, it was, well, I actually wasn't the first choice. It's supposed to be at Wingate and Finchley. Okay. Okay, but um, but then the the capacity was a lot smaller than expected. And so I would have preferred that, me personally. Like, I, I, I like the fact I, that it was a stadium well. for them. Yeah. But at the same time, it mi it misses that essence of like, you know, hearing the crowd, which the crowd was loud. Mm. You know, I, I had my back to the, the predominant SC Dons fans and all the rest of it, and I could hear the Bates fans mm. on the other side. But I, I kind of missed that element of just grassroots being grassroots. You know, you go to a normal Sunday League game, well, a normal SC Dons game, mm. and you've got all the punters, all the fans pretty much on, on the, the touchline. Touch I kind of missed that. Yeah, I mean, so I just think... You know, <laughs> hindsight is a wonderful thing. It is what it is. Yeah, a, yeah. a lot of us aren't British, mm. okay? So a lot of us, where we were born or where we grew up or where our parents grew up, having certain matches in a stadium always kind of, kind of, killed the vibe. Some of the, my best experiences, I've lived in four different countries. I wasn't born in Britain. Some of my favorite experiences was a ring around the pitch. You know, mm. better than, you know, and, and we have those conversations all the time, FA Youth Cup matches, um, extra preliminary FA Cup matches or any sort of charity match. You have to have the right size based on the attendance. Now, I think in terms of atmosphere, acoustics, the attendance and AFC Wimbledon, I think that was really, I was really happy about that. Because while I'm running around working on the outside, me, one of my uh, head of security was... We heard, I think, um, Beatty's had a chance, so the crowd went really loud. Mm. Um, and it sounded like 15,000 people, you know, because we couldn't see, we couldn't see. Yeah. So the acoustics and all that was perfect. And then on top of that, remember, they only wanted me to open one stand. I said, no, I'm, I'm not in that. So kind of like how the Nationals was between Highgate and Beatty's. Yeah, yeah. And everyone was in the main stand. So, and then you put the camera on the main stand, so you're looking over to empty seats. I'm like, no. Yeah. And the main stand was absolutely packed. So I said, no, I, I don't care. I, I, I want... It's close to a ring around, so we have to negotiate on three sides. Yeah. So that's why you had three sides around, because it needs to be surrounded. And then don't forget playing. You don't like playing. I, I was a wing back. I don't like playing on the side where there's no fans. Yeah. You know, you you know, you either want you know a, a mixture or just go back to you know the pitch on the side. So it is what it is. We see it in football. We saw it, see it in futsal. You see it in basketball. You can have a game in an arena, but everyone wants to have it at Rucker Park and it's just surrounded. The fans are just surrounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. But yeah, I mean, uh, there was a lot to learn from it, but coming back, I would be surprised if I hired another professional ground. But um, 
everyone did overall seem to be really happy with it. 